collection was modified, enumeration operation may not execute. This is a message which is thrown by the system invalid operation exception. And today I'm going to discuss the message, what causes it and how to actually avoid it, what the best practices are. Let's start with a very quick example. This is my code. So I'm just going to run it so we can see the exception and the message. And here it is. We have the system invalid operation exception. Collection was modified. Enumeration operation may not execute. Now we're going to go over the definition and what causes this exception briefly. And then we're going to continue with the examples and start with explaining the best practices. Collection was modified. Enumeration operation may not execute. You're going to see this error message in your code. When you attempt to modify a collection while it is being iterated over using an enumerator, such as during a for each loop. Okay, keep in mind that the system invalid operation exception is a broad exception. This is not the only case when it could be thrown. You can see this exception when you do concurrent modifications, some link operations, when you try to use disposed objects and in several other cases as well. So in this video, I'm going to discuss only this instance when we get this message and we can see why it happens, when it happens and what we can do to prevent it. Now let's go back to my code example and see why we are getting this error message. This exception is thrown by collections which implement the iEnumerable interface which in C-sharp is basically all the collections except the one that you create. And if you try to add, remove or modify the collection during the enumeration process, you're going to see this exception. So let's run the code one more time and we see we're getting the exception. Why? Because we're trying to remove an item while we're using the for each loop. And we can also see this exception if we try to actually add to the collection. So let's try add number. And if we run the code, we're going to get the same exception or you can actually use add 222. And again, we're going to get the same exception. So basically, every time during the enumeration process, you try to add, remove or modify the collection, you're going to see this message. Collection was modified, enumeration operation may not execute. Okay, now let's take a look at two different cases when we're using two different collections. The first one is we are going to use a list of integers and the second time we're going to use a dictionary. And in both cases, we're going to try to modify the items inside a for each loop and see what happens in each one of these cases. So inside the for each loop, we're going to try to modify the number. So let's do that. I'm going to first get the index of the item. So it is going to be numbers, index of number, and then I'm going to try to modify this item. So I'm going to actually try to add, let's say 22. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I run the code? Well, let's find out. We get the same exception with the message collection was modified, enumeration operation may not execute. Now let's try to do the same thing using dictionary and see if there is any difference. Let's clear that. Dictionary first. I'm just going to take a dictionary. String int. And we're going to call it my dictionary equals new dictionary. And let's add some items. I'm going to make it Apple, one, and two, three, four. This is going to be banana. This is going to be cherry. This is going to be, let's make it a pear. Okay, now let's see if we can actually use a for each loop to modify each one of these items and see if we're going to get the same exception as we did when we used our list. So let's go for each, we're going to go pair in my dictionary and I'm going to go my dictionary 
pair and I'm going to again it's going to be key I'm going to again try to modify the value we're going to add let's say 22 now what do you think is going to happen this time is it going to work let's find out again I'm going to run the code and we get no exception so let's actually try to print the items and see that we managed to successfully change each one of the values so let's do that and i'm going to use the console right line and let's do key pair key pair key and value that is going to be pair value so let's run the code again and we can see that we managed to modify the values of our dictionary we actually added 22 to each item and we are printing it to the screen and we see that we succeeded so we didn't get the exception this time on the other hand, if we try to modify the dictionary's keys inside the for each loop, we're going to see the very familiar message from the system invalid operation exception. So why is this happening and what can you do? And let's see what the best practices are actually to avoid the exception that we're discussing. As we saw just now, using for each to modify a collection could actually fail sometimes and in other instances, it could work, but instead of remembering which collection you can modify in a for each loop, you should actually stick to the best practices, and this is what they are. Instead of using for each loop, you can use for loop. You can also collect the changes during the for each loop and then apply them after the loop is done. And you can also create a new collection if the modifications are extensive creating a modified copy of the collection is the safest and cleanest approach so let's take a look at each one of these approaches and see how they can help us avoid the exception now let's go back to our first example and this time instead of using for each which actually causes the exception we're going to use the for loop so how can we do that let's make some changes we're going to go for zero smaller than numbers count and we're going to modify the items again we're going to try to add 22 and see if that works and now let's print the numbers to screen console right line i and we're going to run the code and this time we have no exception and our code actually succeeded so this is the first approach to avoid this exception instead of using for each to modify our collection we are using the for loop and you can see that it actually works now let's take a look at the other two approaches now let's demonstrate the second approach, which is where we use the for each loop to collect the changes that we want to make, but we only apply the changes after that loop is finished. So I'm going to go ahead and paste my code. Now let's uh, take a look at the code and see how we can use this approach to avoid the exception. First of all, we're going to create our data table and our data table has three columns, transaction ID, amount and date, and we're going to add four rows and inside the for each loop we iterate over each one of the rows and we're going to collect the changes right now we're going to try to remove the rows which have an amount which is smaller than 50 and this means that only this row should be removed and then in a different for each loop you can see that we are not iterating over transactions which is our data table we are iterating over rows to remove so this is safe to execute so after our main for each loop which iterates over transaction we're going to apply the changes so let's see if the code works and you see that at the beginning we had four rows in our data table and after we apply the changes we have only three rows 
which means that this row right here was successfully removed. So again, what we do here, we collect the changes inside our for each loop without modifying the collection, which is our data table. And then after this for each loop, we safely execute our changes. Let's go ahead and discuss the last approach. Now let's take a look at how we can avoid our exception by using a new collection. What we have is a list of strings which contains different file names and our task is actually to check if the file name ends with text, which is case insensitive in this case, and remove all the other file names. So instead of using for each loop and try to iterate over our file names collection and try to remove the items inside the loop, which is going to cause the exception, we're going to use this approach, which is we're going to create a separate collection, which is again a list of strings. And this collection is going to hold the file names that we actually want to keep. So let's run the code and see if it works. And you can see that the original file names were report, image, data backup, and so on. And after we process the file names inside the for each loop, we populated our new collection, which is the process file names, to hold only the file names, which end with the txt extension. And in this case, we use the case insensitive approach. And this is actually all for me for today. If you like my videos, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.